Well, Professor, whatever or whoever might be behind this, first of all, do you think it's credible that it is some sort of magnetic force? Quite incredible, I'm afraid. Uh, the blades of wheat or the blades of grass would have to be made of iron for magnetic fields of any immediate effect on them, uh, and, clearly, and clearly they aren't. So that isn't the explanation. Presumably, whatever it is, it's creating a massive force down on the corn, isn't it? If it indeed happens overnight, on quite a short time, then quite a large force would be required. So it's either that, or it happens rather more slowly. And if it happens slowly, the sense of uprightness, which all plants have in them, would, I think, tend to counteract this. So we have to accept that it happens quite quickly. It seems strange, too, that it has these very clean edges, doesn't it? I must admit, I, am, I find this a bit baffling, too because it's, it, it, it isn't terribly likely that any sort of force would have such clean edges. Now, what do you make of this dowsing effect? Well, dowsing, I think, is, a, is, an, is an odd phenomenon. It's something which almost everybody can do. I often do it as a party trick, and so can anybody else. Two clothes hangers, straightened out, uh, bent into right angles, put in your hands, and you walk around your living room, and lo and behold, they cross, or you walk around your garden. And your aunt can do it, and your children can do it. So you think the circle's having nothing to do with that? It's a dowsing, nothing, nothing whatsoever. Now, although he's an engineer, Colin Andrews there is, is tending to favour some sort of outside intelligent force. Do you think that's credible? Well, I mean, it is barely credible. I said I was prepared to be amazed. However, being a scientist, and even an elderly scientist, as I said early on, I would go first for those things which I could explain using the laws of nature, and only at the very last resort grasp at the supernatural or the outside intelligence. All right, well, let's take this uh, idea of some unknown outside force a little further. Some people think it's the military. Others say the circles are made by some unidentified flying object from outside our world. Since man conquered space travel, it seemed less and less fantastic that other beings may have been doing it too. Over the decades, there have been countless UFO claims. Strange lights in the sky, powerful force fields, even spaceships themselves. It's not surprising, then, that some think the circles are caused by the classic circular motion of flying saucers. The aliens may have materialised in sleek craft at the speed of light, but it was in his three-wheeler that ufologist Ken Rogers came to Wiltshire last week on his favourite holiday. A few days UFO spotting in the Wessex Triangle. He's been convinced since he was 16 that intelligent beings from another world started human life on Earth and they now return to monitor our progress. He's president of a UFO group called the Unexplained Society. But he has an explanation for the circles, that they're the marks left by alien spaceships. What you'd first see is a strange glow up in the sky. It would then come down. You may hear a strange sort of buzzing sound or, or high-pitched whine. Then it would hover and then gradually sort of, if you can imagine it, materialise into a, a, a saucer-shaped object and then gradually come down, hover, then probes would come out of the sides and probe into the crop. Very few UFO sightings have actually shown a convincing link with the circles, but a Wiltshire couple reports seeing lights and feeling a strange force field when they walked into a circle near Silbury Hill. Basically, we had a very powerful experience whereby we found the place where this UFO or spaceship landed and there was a strong energy there which we could definitely feel and when I was looking at Hannah the whole sky went pitch black which was before that a, a fiery sunset and she became shining white light. I also saw the horizon which was a beautiful sunset turn pitch black and Richard embodied in silver light. Um, also I had a lot of heat going through my body um, and through my arms, and it was just an incredible experience. The sceptics say even if UFOs do exist, why would they leave such obvious marks in the Wiltshire corn? There's two schools of thought here. Either they have left the calling card, letting us know that they've been here, that they are watching us. Secondly, they probably are landing in other areas as well, and it's only we actually see them when they land in, in the fully grown crop fields. 
Even the UFO believers are divided. Some groups say there isn't any real evidence to link them with the circles. Many of the circles have been found on or near Salisbury Plain, the site of one of the Army's busiest training areas. The Ministry of Defence admits to having damaged crops with vehicles and even helicopter rotor blades in the past. But they point out when they leave their mark, it's not in neat circles. Circles have even cropped up on army land. Today, their range control officer is visiting a tenant farm on the edge of the Imber Ranges. Hello, Bernard. Hello, Major. We've got some more circles out here. Yes. Hello, Hello Major. Again. Yes. Two years running, Bernard Elliott and his wife have woken up one morning to find their barley has been flattened. Same as they were last year. That's right. Yes, this. Yes. this year, it's been one large circle one and four satellites. So not spiky like it is now. No, it's obviously no. It's grown up then since right. then. That's right, that's it, yes. Right. What, what's the military doing in this area? Well, as you know, Might Bert, cause something like this. Well, we behave ourselves on your land, or we do our best to. I can't think of any military activity, and I've checked the range calendars that could have caused this, either uh, ground troops or vehicles or, um, or aircraft. I mean, this, it's really just a puzzle. If it isn't the army, Mr. Elliot reckons it's either a hoax or an alien visitor. That and space up there is that large. And uh, if it's as big as people tell us it is, well, we can't be that naive to think that we're the only people in this universe. The Army has taken the problem so seriously, they've even used vehicles and helicopters to conduct their own experiments to confirm they're not responsible. But with the experimental air base at nearby Boscombe Down, couldn't the circles be caused by secret radar or communication trials? I've been through the whole list of, um, of exercises and trials, and there's nothing that would uh, possibly produce the sort of effect that we've seen today. But they wouldn't tell you about it anyway, would they? But I know, uh, before they come on here, they have to actually tell me what they're going to do. Uh, and I, uh, I'm always at liberty to go and inspect and see what they're doing. And uh, I've seen, or I'm aware, that um, the sort of equipment that have been trialled here would not produce that uh, uh, phenomenon. Even if the military is behind it, it seems highly unlikely they'd have kept it hidden for so long, even if they needed to. As for alien visitors, it still remains strange that no one's ever seen a spaceship making such obvious marks in our crops. Of course, some say we should look closer to home, where the answer may be all around us. We know the weather is incredibly powerful. Could the circles have a thoroughly natural explanation? Here's a report from David Garmston. The world's weather has fascinated and confounded man since time began. Although its mechanisms are now largely understood, it remains an untamed and sometimes mysterious force of immense power. Great wind movements like hurricanes can now be observed by satellite and their course predicted. But now there's talk of something new in the skies, an invisible atmospheric force which leaves not destruction in its wake, but beautifully formed circles. It's the theory of Dr. Terence Meaden, an independent meteorologist who's prepared to battle with the scientific establishment to get his radical new ideas accepted. He's the director of the Tornado and Storm Research Organization based at Bradford-on-Avon in Wiltshire. He's been an advisor to the CEGB on the effects of tornadoes on nuclear installations. And he's convinced that it's a cousin of the tornado which is descending over southern England and causing the circles. But unlike this tornado, the mass of wind is stationary and electrically charged. Dr. Meaden maintains that the circles are created by a spinning ball of air sparking with electricity. It descends, pushing the corn down and leaving a spiralling pattern in its wake. Then it recedes or simply disappears into nothing. If he's right, he's discovered a new meteorological phenomenon which challenges preconceptions about the world around us. I see a way in which it's possible that vortices can be formed in the atmosphere by natural means. Uh, you can call that weather if you like. It's, it is something natural in the atmosphere.
I do believe. Dr. Meaden accounts for the number of circles in the West Country by the fact that we're looking harder for them. He also believes that the lie of the land creates favourable conditions for the vortices to be formed in the atmosphere. And he's worked out what it may be like to witness a circle forming. There would have been a tremendous rush of air at the stage, spiralling around, out from a the centre there, and uh, accompanied, I believe, with a humming noise. And if it happened by night, possibly accompanied by a light as well. But then we cannot tell whether this formed by day or by night. Pretty terrifying, actually, if you happened to be around at the time. What would have happened if you were Probably enough here? to knock you over.